The next one I want to show you first the results that we get for yield through some more visual pictures. You can see here this is a see, uh, this is a plot with zero till since 1991. And if we go to the next one, we can nicely see zero tillage uh, with residue. And this picture was, of course, taken the same day. As you can see, it's the same guy holding the stick. Next uh, uh, example is maize, zero tillage since 1991 on, but we, with it, without residue. And next slide, this is maize, and this is zero tillage with uh, residue. We go to the next one. Of course, differences are not all that dramatic um, all throughout the experiment. You can see the differences between zero tillage with residue and what the farmer is doing is not that big in this picture. Now, this picture was taken in 2008. As you can see, in 2008, when we compare uh, with the average pr uh, precipitation and we compare what happened in 2008 in the critical months, June, July, and August, you can see that we had nice rainfall in 2008. Now, as you also can see in 2009, we had much less rainfall uh, in, especially in July and August. So uh, I think you all see now a nice looking crop at the left side and a not so nice looking crop at the right side, which is exactly the left side uh, is uh, conservation agriculture in that 2009 year. And the right side is that same um, farmer practice where he does maize maize, no crop rotation, taking away all the residue and uh, doing conventional tillage. So the message I was trying to make is that on the one end, uh, and if you go to the next slide so you can see some of the graph, on the one end, the red bar, uh, and I'm representing here the yields um, over time, the red uh, uh, line is uh, zero tillage without crop residue retention. The blue line is what farmers are doing, and the green line is uh, conservation agriculture um, combination of zero tillage with residue retention and crop rotation. So you can see that zero till with not enough residue is the worst you can do. Farmer practice sometimes is equally good as the CA practice and um, CA is most of the time on top and is a little bit and I is a little bit more uh, stable than the other the other practices. You may be wondering what I did with my trial in 2011, the last dots where everything is disastrously low, uh, it was because we hadn't had an exceptional uh, frost, so the whole field smelled like popcorn. If you've never had your maize uh, killed by frost, um, that's that's how you know. If it smells like popcorn in your field, then you know that um, things are gone. So the the uh, heavy frost, which normally is not uh, uh, hitting that early in the year just killed um, the whole yield potential of the maize. If you look at wheat, wheat uh, is, uh, has bars uh, that are much closer to each other, which is a much more noble crop in that sense. It can, uh, it can stand a little bit more advi uh, adverse uh, conditions. But as you can see, again, the green line is uh, always uh, on top of the two other ones. Next, please. Of course, as a scientist, we like numbers. I'm just projecting here for you, just for your information. It gives you exactly the same message, but uh, it's important to look at the two last lines. Where what I'm uh, showing there, as you can see, zero tillage, where we keep the residue, has an average of 5.96 uh, tons per hectare. But if you go to the last two lines, where you see zero till keep and then some strange combination, this means that we are there only leaving um, one third of the wheat straw, but leaving all the maize straw, and that gives us around five tons per hectare. And in the zero till, where we only keep half of the straw, which is the keep um, uh, half, we only uh, leave half of the straw of maize and half of the straw of wheat, we get a 5.59. So you can see what I want to, what I'm trying to explain here is that as we uh, move on and as we increase the soil quality of the system we can start uh, looking at partial uh, residue retention. Another important thing we're working on is, uh, but results are not shown here, is the use of uh, of course improved fodder crops so that those can go into the system and can be combined. Next uh, please. When I forget it doesn't move on mine. 
So another way to uh, represent all this, and, and many of you will know that, is the, the typical way you present long-term trials, and we combine uh, what you set out is the mean yield per year, so that you eliminate the, this is a way to eliminate the in, inherent effect of climate. So you set out the main yield uh, of all the treatments, um, and on the other, on the y-axis, you set the treatment yield out. So somehow you correct or you com compare where you are based on the yield potential of that season somehow. And again, you can see that the red line is zero till without residue. The green line, the upper green line, is again uh, conservation agriculture where you do crop rotation, uh, leaving all the residue and, um, uh, and zero tillage. The higher you lay, the higher yield. The steeper you are, or the uh, as as a, as a, as a line, the more variability uh, you have between years. So you can see that where we leave partial residue, which are the crosses, that uh, yield stability is a little bit less, which is one of the potential problems. Next slide, please. I think somebody is using cell phone technologies to get the latest rainfall information. So. Let's look at that aspect. Um, as I said, 2007, 2008 are, were high, high rainfall um, events. We have the date of planting, left side the soil water content, right side the rainfall. So as you can see, uh, the, and then we again have zero till keep, uh, zero till remove, conventional tillage keep, and conventional tillage remove. And we can see that the zero till uh, remove one, which is the uh, black one with small uh, small triangles, that that one is actually laying the lowest if we look at soil water uh, content, even in a high rainfall uh, uh, season. The, the conventional tillage ones are lying in between, which is also important to see. In the conventional tillage one, it doesn't matter if I leave residue or not. And then on the top is the zero tillage where I leave enough residue. Next one, please. The next one is when we had a low rainfall, like the 2009. And you actually can see that all treatments, except conservation agriculture that's uh, laying on the top, um, dropped below the uh, theoretical uh, wilting point of the crop. Uh, not enough days to completely kill it, but yes, enough days to really reduce uh, the yield to very low. Uh, and this is of obviously where CA makes a difference. If we have a very uh, wet year, you can see that the CA practice could overcome this, uh, this period of uh, extremely reduced uh, rain. Next one, please. In this graph, what we are comparing is where we uh, CA practices where we leave all the residue uh, compared with the, those CA practices where we only leave partial residue. And you can see that the soil moisture is uh, almost looking the same. Next one, please. Which is then expressed in uh, water productivity. And if you look at the water productivity between 2007, 2008 and 2009, the zero till remove is always the lowest. The zero till keep is always the highest. If we then travel, take a plane and fly two hours and a half to the north of Mexico, we end up in a situation where we have arid coastal plains, uh, 39 meters above sea level. It's irrigated agriculture, very important to mention, it's flood irrigation. So that irrig irrigation is applied through furrows. Actually, that was the first step of improvement made in that area. 30 years ago, everything was basin uh, application of water, so flat plots and just flood <coughs> flooding on it. Um, in the, the first step was to make a bed and furrow system. And now we uh, go to a CCA-based a bed and furrow system. So what we do is we make permanent bed. The characteristics of the area is the haplic uh, vertisol and the rain is coming in very, very heavy showers only in the summer, which is actually uh, hurricanes uh, passing through. But when there's a crop, which is in the winter season, there is basically no rain because it's uh, a desert area. Next one, you can see on this graph the, uh, uh, where this area is represented for. Next graph. We compare permanent beds 
versus conventional steel system. Permanent bets is a CA based system where you make bets and furrows, only reshape the furrow, but never steal on top of the bet. Next one, please. If you look at the results, we can see the red one, and the red one, uh, I'm, I'm here uh, giving you yield and uh, year. So the red one is uh, permanent bets where we burn, while the uh, green ones are permanent bets where we keep residue partial residue, uh, keep residue or do partial residue uh, retention. So the message is exactly the same. If we combine a zero till system, but we burn, that uh, it has an effect on the yield. Why is that effect less? Because I'm already irrigating, so I'm already controlling the water factor. Next one, please. You, you see exactly the same, but now in some more nicer looking figures. Next one, please. Same trick again. So again, red one, permanent beds burn, green ones where you keep at least some residue. Next one, uh, please. What we're comparing here is actually permanent beds where we leave residue and do full irrigation with permanent beds where we leave residue but only give two irrigations, which is a 60% reduction of water. Conventional beds or conventional field system with red or reduced irrigation and conventional system with full irrigation. And we can see if we are, are at a full irrigation system that your um, yield is not very different. I do have to stress that we are applying sufficient water in the full irrigation system so the plant is completely happy that there's no stress. So we are, we are applying some more water in the full irrigated system with conventional tillage. In the uh, permanent beds where we reduce the uh, the uh, the water use, I'm sorry, uh, or in the reduced uh, irrigation system, you can clearly start seeing uh, yield differences. So it's all about the water. Next one, please. I'm going to skip this one because some people are already leaving. So if you can go to the conclusions, conclusion of the system, CA gives highest yield in both environments. There's a difference in stability. Uh, we can not fully remove or burn the straw. We have to look more at threshold values for partial residue retention. We now can go to the next one. There's, there has been a lot of discussion on the use of CA systems for climate change mitigation. Uh, one first aspect, of course, is uh, what I was interested in is carbon sequestration. What we did was a, a literature review where we uh, retained all the studies that were older than five years and that minimally measured to 30 centimeters. And the first conclusion was that they're 30 centimeters, minim minimally from 0 to 30 centimeters in the soil profile carbon was measured. Um, first conclusion was that it was very little research from Africa, Central and Latin America, and from Asia. Next one. For the research that was available, when we compared conventional tillage versus zero tillage, we retained 62 cases. And eight of those two cases had the CC stock reduced, 21 had the C stock not uh, significantly different, and 32, 33 had an increased uh, carbon stock. If we looked at increased crop rotation, we uh, retained 55 cases, and there 22 had the C stock decreased, 5 not significantly different, and 28 had the C stock increased. Uh, next one, so the conclusions of that was that with CA systems, not always the C stock uh, increases. Why is not very clear. The underlying processes seem not to be fully understand. At least I, I, I did not yet fully understand them. And in order to do that, we need to expand our research results, especially to Africa, Latin and Central America, and Asia. But even that, if CA does not always increase the C stock, it's still good to promote the system, but for other reasons. 